hey guys, I have a straight piece of tubing that I want to put a bend in and a bunch of cardboard boxes with some bits and pieces in it. Let's combine these two and see if we can bend some tubing. I'm not real big on unboxing videos. That's not the purpose of my channel. I need to hack some of this stuff open and um, I'll bring you guys along for the ride. No sense me describing everything as I take it out. I'll just kind of do a time lapse or a high speed video here. Get you through it quick. it's not obvious what we have here is a uh, tubing bender similar design to what they call the Woodward fab uh, style of bender uh, matter of fact Woodward fab is the, uh, the bending die that I got there's a uh, picture of what the benders look like this uh, is not exactly what we're going to be building today but kind of along the same lines much much cheaper bending die that I got is genuine Woodward fab. It is inch and a quarter tubing and it is designed to do 180 by I think that's a five inch. And what we have here is actually a piece of pipe. It's not a piece of tubing. It should in theory be the right size and I think it'll fit. This is just a try anyways. I went to my local machine shop and got some couple of short cheap pieces of pipe to uh, demonstrate this thing after it's all put together. What we've got here is a swag off road uh, conversion kit designed to change this over from using this great big lever to wrench the pipe bender or tubing bender. Instead, we're going to use this air over hydraulic. This plugs into an air fitting of some sort. I don't know what flavor or fitting that is, but anyways, plugs in and we just use the trigger and this piston essentially does the pumping rather than having to do it with the hand jack. Although you still can do it with the hand jack as well. What this will allow us to do instead of having to mount this unit to a pedestal and attach it to the floor so that we can pull on it really hard, this will allow us to just set it on a bench and mount up what we want in it and hit a button and it will bend. It will be much easier to work with. The air over hydraulic jack that I got here came from eBay, uh, just a generic seller, but I reached out to Swag Off Road and it was one of the ones that they uh, recommended. I'm not exactly sure what the concern was, but they said there was, there was only a couple of actuators on eBay that would work and this specifically was one of them. So this is the one I got. I believe it has something to do with the size of the opening in the uh, in the mounting bracket here. Let me get some stuff kind of sort of organized here so we can start working towards putting this thing together. Something tells me that it's not going to have a, uh, a base plate that we can attach to the bench all that easily, but we'll figure it out. Getting started on the assembly of this thing. First off, this uh, set of instructions is pretty much useless, but the most useful part of the whole instruction is the exploded diagram. Here we can see the stand that I was talking about and they label it as item number one, stand, optional. And they didn't give us the option to buy this. I got this bender from Amazon and they didn't have the accessory stand listed with the original. However, we can make it work and with using the, uh, the swag off-road air over hydraulic system, we shouldn't have uh, too much trouble being able to get this thing put together and uh, just run it on the bench here, test run. Other than the instructions here are terrible. They're poorly written text and fuzzy kind of um, postage stamp size photographs. I don't know how well that shows up for you guys, but I'm squinting at them and they pretty much don't mean anything to me. We'll make it work, we'll get this thing put together. 
This is the first item. It's a spacer plate. The idea being this is uh, a spacer between the optional stand and the actual bender itself. We'll lay it down uh, kind of like this to start with. This is going to be our bottom base arm. And we know it's the bottom because there's two bolt holes here and this is for the uh, degree wheel. Bolts up into the bottom of it. Matter of fact, while we're here, let's throw a couple of bolts in it. We use these large three quarter inch bolts and a couple of thimbles, spacers. Here we have the bending lever. If we were going to be using this in its uh, conventional ratcheting style, the handle slips over and you pull on it. We've got a spacer with a grub screw. Make sure you put the grub screw in the right way so you can tighten and loosen. Throw a tape measure under there just so it kind of sort of sits where it needs to. You have to make sure in the bending arm, this hole is pointed in the direction towards you because when we assemble this, this uh, kind of ratcheting or comb type thing is what is actually going to be pushing on the bending arm. So uh, that will have to attach the right way. If this hole was over here, then it wouldn't work. This is our other main arm and it just lines up over top. slip those bolts down through. I'll slide it off the table just far enough. Let the bolts slip through. If you look at the exploded view, it shows the washers being under the head of the bolt, but that's not normal. Usually you're turning the nut. So you want the washer under the nut rather than the, the head of the bolt. Head of the bolt, we put an inch and a sixteenth wrench. And we've got an inch and a sixteenth deep socket. At this end, we've got a couple of bushings that need to go in. And you'll notice this is smaller than this. And likewise, larger. That's not going to stay up in place. But this is your main um, pivot point for your bending arm. I'm guessing that we're going to want to put some lubricant on this brass so that it doesn't get worn out. But for now, we're just going to put things together. These are the bending arms and you'll notice that the holes are offset here and there's a trick to this. You have to make sure that the holes are as close as possible to the, uh, the main body of the unit and likewise as close as possible. I have a couple more spacers, a couple more long bolts and this is going to drop as soon as I lift on it a little bit. Told ya! Keep things spaced. I'm just going to slide the bending die in place. Drop the big pin down the middle just to kind of line things up. Here we have the uh, 19 mil on the nut and 18 on the head of the bolt. Don't ask me why, but that's how they do it. Puts our bending die in place. We've got our backing die and this has a roll pin that you push into this hole. We've got uh, long pins, we've got short pins and now what we're going to do you can see you can see these holes in the bending die and we're going to line them up. We've got a capture strap that basically holds the end of the pipe in place. The idea being here is that this capture strap uh, pin doesn't catch on anything else. Here we have our indicator pointer and it just screws into the end of the uh, the bending die. There's a couple of different positions that you can attach it to uh, depending on the angle. 
This is essentially a, a cooling arm for a uh, for a drill press or you know coolant tube, and you just use it like a pointer. Uh, obviously, it's a little loose on there. I'll have to figure that out. Essentially, you set it. I don't know how well those degree numbers show up. I can see them fairly well, but they don't show up very well in the camera. And we start at 120. We just did a 10 degree bend, a 20 degree bend, etc. Note to self, don't drop your tray of cotter pins on the floor when you go to pick it up. What caused all this trouble with the cotter pin tray is that they don't include any uh, pins to retain this roll in the, uh, in the unit itself. Here's our ratcheting lever. This pin needs to go in there and Those are two cotter pins. The way this thing is supposed to work is you hook the ratchet to it, and you have the big long arm, and you do an over kind of a over center with the arm, reset it, pull. Reset it and pull, and eventually it bends the tube around. That's a good place to start. We've basically got this thing put together for the most part. Well guys, my plan was to do this uh, all in one video. However, the, uh, the assembly part of this video, of this unit, is uh, taking me a little bit longer than I'd anticipated, because the instructions are terrible. And I've been looking at the swag off-road instructions and there's uh, quite a bit involved in assembling this piece. What I'm going to do is end the video here and in, in the next part to this we will uh, assemble the swag off-road gear, get it mounted onto the bender, and we'll see if we can bend some tubing. Thanks a lot for stopping by. appreciate you taking the time to watch. And uh, if you can do one of those thumb up things, and I'd appreciate it if you could throw me a subscribe. You got this far in the video and you want to see more about this tubing bender, by all means, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, etc. And we'll catch you guys in the next mess.